Hey everybody, Michael here. And over the last week or so, we've seen a couple of big developments. One of them being this release from Idlesauce, which was UMTX2, which is basically a WebKit-based kernel exploit and jailbreak for the PlayStation 5. Now, a lot of us have been using IPv6 as well as UMTX1, but we found that the UMTX2 is a lot more stable. At least I have on a 4.03 system. Now, with the UMTX2 being out, we also saw this release just two days ago from Lightning Mods with ETA Hen Update 2.0b, which came with a number of different features. Now, it didn't take long before people started combining the UMTX host here with ETA Hen and developing that more specifically for these ESP devices that are currently out. And we go over to releases, you can see that there is a number of boards that is supported here. And that is ESP8266 and then the ESP32 series of devices. And it says that what's included in here is an offline host that uses the UMTX2 and has the latest update from Lightning Mods. Now, this only supports PS5 firmwares 1.x to 5.x, but that shouldn't be a problem for most of you. So I went and I collected a couple of boards around the house just so maybe you could kind of get a visual for them. So the one that I am going to be talking about here today is going to be this ESP device. So if you do want to follow along with the guide here, I will be doing it for that device. Now I'll provide a link in the description for a little bit more information. But we also have support for these devices as well. And the other one that isn't on this list is obviously the ESP32-S3. And so none of the Pi Zeros are currently supported here for the Pi Zero W. Now those could be supported in the future, but not at this time. And so if you were to ask me, Michael, why should I do a PS5 offline host? Can't I just rely on the online hosts that are currently available? Well, Echo Stretch put out a message this morning letting us know that the ES7 and 1.SAT was down after reaching 250 gigabytes of traffic in a month. Basically, he had not paid for bandwidth that had exceeded that, so they just turned off the site. Now, this is always something that could potentially happen. And if you do like his ES7 and 1.SAT, I would highly recommend donating to him. Okay, so let's head back to the project page and let's go ahead and get started with this. So again, you do need one of these devices and we just need to scroll down in here just a little bit, click on assets, and here is where we need to select the one for our device. So now that we have the bin file, we need to download this Node MCU Pi Flasher. Now, it is included in here, at least the Windows version, but if you do want the version for the Mac, I would always go to the official page here and then just download it from here. So again, right there is the Windows version. The next thing is just going to be a bit optional here, and that is if you want to download a PKG, that will open up a web browser to go directly to this site right here. Now, if you want that, you can just download this PKG here and then just install it on your PS5 like any fake package. And so for me, I'm probably just going to go to this address on my PlayStation 5. Okay, go ahead and get the Node MCU Pi Flasher downloaded as well as the appropriate bin for whichever device that you're currently using. Okay, so once your device is connected to your Windows computer, you will hear the Windows chime that basically says that it found a new device. If you didn't hear that, you may have to do a bit of troubleshooting, but you should be able to load the Pi Flasher and then select the serial port that your ESP device is currently running on. Now, mine is running on COM3, 
But if you don't see yours, be sure to go ahead and repress the reload button because it will resync again in case it didn't get it the first time. So in my instance, I'm going to select COM3 here. Now I'm going to select my Node MCU firmware, and that is my ESP32-S2 device. And then for the rest of the options here for baud rate, we're going to leave that on default. For the flash mode, we're going to leave that on dual here. And then for erase flash, we're going to select yes. And then we're going to press the flash node MCU. So you can see right here, it basically just gives it a command here. And we can see we found it on port 3. It has determined that this is an ESP32-S2 device. It only has the four megabytes of flash. And then down here, you can see right now, it is writing that data to the device. So once this finishes up, we'll be able to simply take this out and then just plug this directly into your PlayStation 5. And then it will always be powered up. And then from there, you can always run this offline. Okay, and if yours ends and looks something like this right here, then you are ready to take that over to the PlayStation 5. Okay, so back over on my PlayStation 5, I have rebooted my PS5 4.03 system here. And as you can see, I don't have anything in here such as debug settings, and I am not currently jailbroken. Again, just make sure you have already plugged in your ESP32 device into your PlayStation 5. And then we need to go over here to network and we're going to go to settings and then set up an internet connection. Okay, and we can see it listed right here at just PS5 ESP underscore host. And we're gonna go ahead and we're going to put in the password here, which is just going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we can see what the password is right there. And let's go ahead and go to done here and then OK. And that is normal. We're going to go ahead and go OK there. And we'll go back, back, connection status should show that it is connected. And from here, let's go up to the user guide, user guide, user guide. And we're going to select yes on this. And right there it is running completely local. So that is pretty sweet. So let's go ahead and do jailbreak here. And we can see if there is any sort of speed difference between doing this local versus doing it over the network. I don't think there will probably be much as pretty much it has to kind of go through multiple of those conditions. But there you can see it took 14 seconds to get this one completely jailbroken. That is so very sweet. And so from here, I'm just gonna go over to ETA HIN 2.0B. So we can see we've got the bootstrapper message here. And we are loading the ETA HIN toolbox. And there it is, ETA HIN 2.0B. My Lightning Mods is running here. So. Again, this is completely all offline. So that was pretty sweet. So from here, I'm just going to go back and you know, we got to go out of it, then go back into settings. And there we go. There is our debug settings, which obviously goes to the brand new ETA HIN toolbox. So yeah, very, very sweet. So it definitely did not take very long in order to get this system jailbroken using this offline method, I would totally recommend it, especially if you've got a couple of bucks to spend on one of these very cheap ESP devices. Anyways, thank you so very much for watching, and don't forget to leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Michael.